making of cinema and when i joined screen as an editor he said ab stars ke bare mein bahut likh liya ab hamare field mein aa jao aur hamare bare mein jana dhoom as far as my knowledge goes collected under 100 crores dhoom 2 and uh, dhoom 2 according to me is 150 and dhoom 3 is 530 you two have been involved with the franchise and that's why you share the platform with me today vijay i would start with you you wrote the story of dhoom screenplay of dhoom 2 and you directed dhoom 3 what comes first or what came first the idea the thought of a film or the idea of a franchise when you and aditya chopra met was it clear from the very beginning that it, this is going to be a franchise well, i must confess when i when i was invited for this and i i read uh, the making of a successful franchise i thought i'd be damned if i know because uh, it I think when you write something or when you make a film, there's, there's always the idea and the desire to make a film. The the fact that it becomes a franchise is something which is a quality that the film has, and the film inevitably is bigger than all that. So it's it's the it's some connection between the audience and the film that happens, which makes us feel that they might be willing to see. something which comes after this as well and that is why a sequel uh, is made a lot of times it's made only for a commercial interest but i don't think i think we've managed to what you're to trying to say is that you just made dhoom and then uh, you saw the reactions and after that you said let's make dhoom 2 yeah, and you all waited yeah. for a few years and then you said let's make dhoom 3 in is a very cut and dried fashion yes when we first met we wanted to make a film we wanted to make a film with bikes and action the success of dhoom paved the way for the sequel which was dhoom 2 the success of dhoom 2 made us aware that we must have a dhoom 3 but we could not have a dhoom 3 unless we kind of broke the mold that we ourselves had set up so in that sense the idea will always be first the script should always be first i don't think you can make a film without it and certainly not a franchise you know abhishek committing to one film is bad enough because you have to prepare yourself and say that you know okay i'm giving my day it's my time my passion to one film and then you reserve those dates now when you look back had you thought at that time that you're going to give 10 years of your life to this one franchise because you committed to drew thoom then it went on to thoom 2 how does an actor do it how does he block his dates how does he give his time how does he reserve this kind of uh, space in case the filmmaker wants to make the film uh, firstly good morning everyone and just to start with um, thank you for the introduction um, although when she said she seen me grow that's a bit incorrect because i was born bigger than her um, as you can see she's um, rather power packed and petite but um, to answer your question although when they first conceptualized dhoom there was never any thought that it might become a franchise but when the actors were cast and i remember the somewhere at the back of his mind an idea that this could grow into a franchise because um he had mentioned that at that point of time if the film does achieve the goals we had set for it then there was a possibility that we could make a sequel of the basic story plot of thoom lent itself to a franchise film um so he was very clear that we're experimenting with something if it works then we can um, make it into a franchise having said that when you first sign up for the first film there was never any definite guarantee that this is going to be a franchise so the actors that associated initially um we never had the thought process that there's going to be a doom 2 and then there's going to be a doom 3 Yes, whilst making Doom 2, you wanted that to be a sequel. Oh, sorry, when you're making Doom, and um, so I think these are things that grow more organically. You don't really plan for it from from a creative point of view, from an actor's point of view. Um, I'm sure because Victor wrote, um, has written all the the Dooms. Um, that's something that could have played on his mind. Um, also, if you see Doom as a film, I don't know if all of you all have seen it. Uh, but it's not 
it's not really a character based franchise although the common thread between all the three parts are uh, you know inspector jay dikshit acp jay dikshit and um, ali his his friend uh, but it's not um, a character heavy franchise for example say like a batman is a batman is about batman and his adventures although thoom is generally's adventures but th- you can pick them up and place them in any situation that also makes it easier for it to become a franchise because you can pick and choose your situations as you wish so as an actor you don't really sign on to it uh, con- when our contracts were drawn we never said okay this is going to be a franchise so this is where we see it coming um maybe if there is a doom for made maybe the actors would then think about it and say okay here is a successful franchise now we know that uh, this is something that is going to carry on so maybe we can incorporate that from a creative perspective but um as actors you never really sign up saying this is going to go into a huge franchise so let me block 10 years of mine uh, when we were making doom we never dreamt that there'd be a doom 2 let alone a doom 3 and let alone that you know 3 months after doom 3 we'd be sitting at fiki frames discussing that uh, you know what goes into making a successful franchise this is interesting because um, both of them say that they don't know that it's going to be doom 2 and doom 3 but obviously um, yashraj films and aditya chopra somewhere have it in mind and that's how they plan it so what is very important in a film like this is you really need a very solid banner so that if it works they are able to put more money and go ahead on it but my question is um, for you because uh, the first two are directed by another director sanjay garvi and you are writing it now when he is making the film and it's your thought which is being portrayed are you simultaneously making another film in your head or thinking that maybe i would have done it this way and he's doing it this way or i wanted to emphasize this but he has projected that um i think i think as a writer your your job is to try and get something on paper which is true to my my imagination but as the script is done then that technically finishes my job so after that it is the director's baby because he is the one who will author the film and uh, i don't think any two people can be very similar so in that sense i think whatever sanjay did was credit to him and it was uh, a successful film uh, when i was going to direct it therefore i i i thought and i chose a slightly different route altogether which is something which is personal to me and uh, there is no conflict in that but yeah but as a writer there's a film in your head and then somebody else goes and shoots it and that's the film that was there in his head and it's and, all and far. how was it different when you were shooting it sorry huh? when you finally did the 3 yeah. one how different was it for you were you expecting the producer to give you um the break as a director did you ask for it no. were you nervous uh, anxious excited i you were you all you all of it you're nervous I'm nervous, anxious, and excited on a on a Sunday. So uh, I think when I'm at work, I think that's that's when I'm kind of most relaxed. Um, but uh, that's uh, uh, no, I've I've already done a film with the Ashraj called Tashan. So that was my break as a director. And while, uh, funnily enough, while I was shooting Tashan, Adi and Abhishek had met for some thing, and Adi told Abhishek that if there is a Doom Three, I think Victor should direct it. So they were discussing that. Uh, unknown to me and uh, i was also quite clear that whatever i write is what i would like to direct so once i once we knew that we were doing doom 3 it was fairly evident that i would direct it and uh, yeah i just i just hope that i would be up for the job you know abhishek you said that when you signed doom uh, you didn't know you were going to do doom 2 or later on there was going to be a doom 3 so when you make a contract with the banner it is just for one film and then you make a contract for a second film and then you make a contract for a third film now as a professional i feel uh, when the banner or the producer is not open his cards right from the beginning that he's going to make three films then the actor is in a way going in a loss because if i know for sure that i'm going to do three films with him i would make my contract in a different way um am i 
saying the right thing or is it a plus that you can negotiate each time differently? We have to set a standard for this discussion, which is you're discussing a creative field. So there are a lot of variables that come into a creative field. Uh, as much as we'd like it to be a business and as much as hard as we try to keep it as professional as possible, there has to be a lot of elbow room for creativity. There are many such deals struck today in the corporatized film industry um, where actors sign on to multiple films. Um, you do multiple picture deals with, um, with your producers not necessarily just for one franchise, but for different films, possibly. Um, that is coming in, but at the end of the day, all of this is ruled and dictated by creativity. Um, Dhoom, thankfully, has grown into a, a giant of a franchise. And um, with all respect and credit to everybody associated with it, including the producers, Tomorrow, if there was a Thoom form made by a completely new team, it would still garner a lot of attention because the name and the brand of Thoom has grown such. So, um, is it a plus or a minus? It is. Tomorrow, Aditya Chopra and Victor might decide that I think we've milked this franchise the maximum that we could. Um, let's not make any more. That's a creative decision. That's not necessarily a business decision because after seeing the kind of business Doom 3 has done um, and seeing the, the trend of the last three films, it just goes to show that the business has, I think, doubled each time. So business sense says, yeah, go ahead, make Doom 4. But tomorrow, as creative people, they might say that there's not much more we can do with this. So let's end it here. So although there's a lot of... This is a problem you're always going to have in the film industry. Um, the biggest problem I think that you're always going to face is it is a commercial art. Um, and that's something uh, which is going to be a problem for it all the time. Yes, we'd like artistic freedom, we'd like uh, the opportunity to express our creativity, but you're also going to have to cater to a demand of commerce, which is you're, you're expecting an audience to go in there and purchase a ticket. So on some level, when I believe that when I expect anybody in this audience to go out there and buy a ticket of my film, I'm, um, it's kind of like a promissory note. I'm kind of promising that I will give you your money's worth in entertainment. Uh, so it becomes my duty to try and um, fulfill that. So you're always going to have to play this balancing game. So um, is it going to hamper or hurt an actor if they don't sign on to a multiple film deal or the actor keeps their cards close to the chest? Yes and no. Yes, because um, maybe you're robbing them an, an opportunity of uh, negotiating a better deal. But like you said, if you don't and suddenly um, what happens if tomorrow the franchise doesn't do well? Exactly. So, um, you know, like I said, it, it becomes very ambiguous in a creative field because everything is dictated ultimately, not just by commerce, but equally and sometimes more so by through the creative uh, reasoning of the project. Very well explained and I have to uh, say a little story yeah, because today uh, films are so much better planned on paper, on the sets. Um, and they more or less, no matter how big the budget or the canvas, get over uh, before a year. I remember when Boni Kapoor was making uh, Roop Ki Rani Choro Ka Raja, the film went on for five years, for whatever reasons. And finally, when the film was released in the theatre, he said, you know, I'm so fortunate that nothing untoward happened over the years. All my actors were in place. My cameramen and the technicians were all there. They were all looking almost the same. Nobody had put on a lot of weight or were down with some kind of uh, illness. Uh, so there are so many factors. Vijay, um, when you are writing the film thrice with different situations, circumstances, a lot of things can happen. As it is, writing is a very um, isolating experience um, 
and it is more difficult to write a commercial film than to write an offbeat film because you have to look at the nooks and corners to make it interesting. Did you feel bored at some point? Uh, did you feel um, that uh, you had to do something different to excite yourself or your characters because you had to have the same characters and yet make them different? See, I think the the truth is that whatever you do, whether it's a franchise or not, a, uh, uh, just to just to put it in perspective, I think Adi um, and I when before Doom Two began, he said one thing which I thought was was fairly astute, and uh, he said if it is a film that we would have made in any case, then we should make the story as Doom Two. We should not make a Doom only because we are we are. We should not be uh, fulfilling just a franchise, and that I think that by itself makes sure that it's not ever going to be only a commercial decision. The commerce has to be driven by the creative, and if we manage to do that, then then you're on a good turf. However, writing is is lonely, it's dark, it's soul crushing, it's fantastic, and like somebody said, that's on a good day. So, <laughs> so. Um, so I think you you are you are always trying to excite yourself to write, and you don't want to do what you've already done in the past. The fact that uh, Jay Dikshit and Ali they are they are like my they are like my friends. So uh, in in a lot of ways they will, uh, and I don't mean the actors. I think the characters themselves they sit in a corner somewhere and they say, "So what are you going to do with us?" And uh, and there is a certain dignity that we need to offer the characters that we write. Um, however, because I mean I can speak more personally about Doom 3 because Doom 1 and Doom 2, I was having a lot of fun doing as well. But with that fun came this responsibility, and uh, and I felt I couldn't do exactly what we'd done in the past. It could not just be it couldn't be just a fun film. It must have fun, but it must have some gravity, you know. And that is where I think. That is why there is a there is a shift in the franchise. There is a shift in the creative of the of the franchise, which was exciting, but it was also very risky. So I'm glad it paid off. You know, you very rightly said it because uh, unfortunately, Abhishek, we have a very um, star obsessed media. Um, for me, whom franchise belongs to the producer to the screenplay writer because he's common in all three and to Jay Dikshit and to Ali because they are the four people who are driving this carriage and they are making uh, was on how to make a successful franchise uh, and they were very sweetly invited uh, Victor and me here to speak about Doom and um, I think you know Fiki is doing a great job to bring more attention to the business side of, of films and um, let's hope that we can come up with some great resolutions and great answers. Speaking at the Indo India Forum at LSE which is the London School of Economics tomorrow. My feeling is not important, audience ke feel kari ke that is important and I hope they enjoy the film, it's releasing in Diwali and um, they should expect a lot of entertainment.